the, the, the title of this lecture is the future of lighting design, but uh, it's been actually quite a, an obsession of mine in the last five years that I've been doing lighting design. Uh, I've been doing projection design and set design a long time, more than a longer time than that. But five years intensely, I've been doing lighting design. And the question arose to me uh, quite quickly, uh, how do we uh, how do we assess which lighting design is better than the other one? Or is lighting design good in a show? Or how how, how can we say that one lighting design is, has been like mesmerizing or it hasn't been just adequate or, or what? So the way that I, I try to do this is just go back in time uh, to, to the basics and try to figure out uh, what should be an adequate lighting design and what is the one true light that actually can be done in a show. It, of course, it depends from show to show what you, what you want to uh, present. But uh, let me let me go through this. This is a basically an uncompleted uh, thought thought process that I have. But I think I've gone to some degree of assessing in in what lighting design, uh, how it came to be, and what it tends to be, and what is actually the future of it. Uh, I could agree. Uh, I can agree with uh, Ivan that uh, we have a tendency as people to be infatuated with new technologies and try to apply them in any way possible, in any way and in any place possible, which is, of course, uh, sometimes uh, nice in an experimental way, but oftentimes it just takes you uh, off tangent and uh, doesn't, doesn't serve the purpose of the story. The purpose of the story is actually how theater came to be through storytelling. So the only thing that I can imagine is uh, that the lighting design became with the first human in the cave talking around a small fire, uh, doing shapes with his hands on the wall and telling stories to, to his uh, people around the fire about how he caught an animal in a hunt. So basically that's where story storytelling started and in my, in my uh, assessment, basically that's where lighting design started. So ever since uh, that uh, came to be, we have the emergence of theater in the in the ancient Greece, some um, uh, three thousand to two thousand years BC, and uh, ever since then, uh, theater has had a long-lasting love affair with technology. Uh, okay. If you can imagine uh, masks or the architecture of Greek uh, theater and the uh, fantastical imagery of the Italian Renaissance uh, machines and to the digital projections we see so much today as we saw uh, as Ivan did. Uh, and uh, I have a piece of paper here telling me what to do next. <laughs> Uh, so actually, what when when light came into theater was not even with the with the necessity of artificial light. It was the first uh, the the daylight that, because it was only possible to have uh, a theater productions in the open during daytime. Even then, they started uh, hanging uh, huge uh, canvases on the on the architecture of the amphitheaters and so just trying to give a little bit of uh, color to the light that's coming through the canvases and so that's where a little bit more complex the lighting design became to be even though they weren't still aware that they were actually doing lighting design probably and uh, uh, there's also a mention uh, from uh, 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 1452, uh, it's uh, a long way after, is where we see that they started using artificial light during the night to light the theater performances. That's uh, huge bonfires, basically hoisted up on huge sticks. Uh, uh, we see in 1620, an Italian called Nicola Sabatini, who designed a uh, parapet, to be, that's the word for it, uh, on the front of the stage with a row of, row of oil lamps placed behind it to illuminate the actors. 
that is also a pre precursor to the footlights we know today. And we, I'm, I'm going to skip over time. In 1783, we see the appearance of the kerosene lamp. And uh, all the playhouses try to uh, use it uh, much more because it had much intense light. After that, the next uh, revolution evolution was the gas lighting, uh, first installed in 1803 uh, in the Lyceum Theatre in London by Frederick Albert Windsor. And uh, uh, there's also an interesting uh, expression that we uh, we know in English that is called to be in the limelight, which is to be actually to be in the center of attention, which actually came from the actual lime uh, used for building to be uh, heated up to almost uh, uh, to almost melting point, which then uh, gave out an intense white light for the actors to actually be in the limelight. Um, and the final uh, biggest uh, revolution in uh, lighting design is with the uh, appearance of electric, with the invention of electricity. And uh, in the first use of uh, electricity uh, was in 1846 to be used in theater for lighting in the Paris Opera. Uh, of course, this was all, uh, the revolution was uh, basically based on incandescent Edison electric lamps in 1879. And somehow I forgot to scroll through all these. Very, very interesting, but let's go back to the Edison lamp. But I think that what I've said is basically all that you know. <laughs> and in 1919, we see a little bit of uh, lighting uh, being used uh, as art, uh, as as an artist tool, not just to light the stage or the actors on it, and that's uh, the futurist uh, like to, and the cubistic art like to use uh, because their lighting uh, emphasized the grotesque creations and created the desired effect on stage. Uh, diffuse theater lighting. And also the electrical lighting was used not only to light the theater from the inside, but from the outside to make it even more appealing to people. Uh, diffuse theater lighting became the norm in modern theaters because if we had uh, any action on stage and it was uh, completely covering the stage, there would be no problem for actors to go anywhere and they would have uh, freedom to do whatever they wanted. It became norm in the modern theater. Uh, but there was something still missing in it. Uh, even though we would color the light with some uh, um, glass, getting a, uh, an effect and uh, uh, trying to do all, all sorts of other effects. Uh, uh, all in all, lighting design has been used not only to just uh, see the people, but also to create some atmosphere or special effects. And always there was this tendency to use the new thing, the the, the big thing, the, the most awesome uh, thing that uh, one could expect. Uh, so the audience would uh, be in, basically in awe. Uh, uh, as lighting design uh, progressed, it was not defined as lighting design, and there was no such a role as a lighting designer in the in in that time. But the production, or actually the theater director, would assume the the role of the lighting designer, uh, basically by telling the electrician crew uh, crew what to do in certain uh, in certain moments, and they would just take their lead. Uh, sometimes there would be an electrician who might be a little bit uh, adverse to the artistic side of things and would take on the uh, the role of the lighting designer. But uh, that slowly came to revolve on uh, in the 1940s as the lighting designer role was not only taken by the theater di uh, director, but also by the stage designer. Uh, after that, uh, uh, in the 1970s, uh, it became a uh, quite normal thing to have a theater lighting designer in, uh, in mentioned in the program. 
So the first mention of a lightning designer would come from the 1970s. And it is interesting that actually lighting design is exponentially start to grow uh, with the actual artist as a member of the artistic team uh, of a theater production. Uh, now, uh, has is, is any other thing uh, that needed uh, further discussion? It was in that short span of time that was needed for uh, lighting designers to exist, that we can only start to talk about lighting design because we had no uh, a, we had no uh, accumulated da data on how much of lighting design was used in theater. So now that we have a lot of accumulated data, we can actually try and uh, see what what is uh, lighting design, what is the history of lighting design, how how lighting design is it good in any way. And what makes it good? Uh, and uh, that's why it only became apparent in the second dec decade of the 21st century, which is just uh, the previous decade, and uh, which is interesting because uh, once I started researching this, I started looking into uh, books uh, with the theme of lighting design. There's not so many. And all the books that we have is uh, mostly just technical based like trying to describe the, the technology which is now new, which is how to which how it works. But none of the discussions were were actually about how to make a, a show uh, look uh, better, apart from that uh, they uh, knew uh, at one point that there is a cardinal uh, rule for lighting design and this is rule number one, that all action and all the actors at every moment must be visible to all of the audiences wherever they are seated at. And trying to follow that rule, uh, we've come to the modern day uh, uh, designing, I'm talking about modern day before this century, um, in which it was uh, the, 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 uh, the, the fixture that we had available made it uh, so made it uh, possible to light the entire stage which we did um, light it from all sides and uh, one one of the prominent methods is uh, one pictured in this slide it's called the McCandless method named for Stanley McCandless who who actually in 1930s um, published his method of correct lighting, which uh, up to this day, we can see uh, really uh, hardcore uh, lighting designers still using it as like the one true method. And it's three lights, uh, uh, obviously two of the front lights placed on the 45 degree angle from top and 45 degree ang angles on the side and one backlight. Uh, and as, as, as lighting design progressed, especially in the last two decades, we see a lot of lighting designers uh, skewing away from this, uh, I mean, basic, uh, uh, basic lighting methods and uh, almost instinctively trying not to use as much uh, lighting fixtures as, uh, as they can. It's, um, it's interesting that uh, this would be uh, um, maybe uh, an example of that method where you see like the entire stage is completely lit. We see the faces of the actors lit from both sides. We see them uh, lit, maybe a little hue is uh, warmer on the one side and a little colder on the other side, but still this makes them distinctively uh, not in a, in a realistic uh, environment. And uh, the interesting thing, what allowed uh, the, the modern day contemporary lighting designers uh, to, to, to use different kind of methods of lighting is, and this might seem kind of strange, but uh, it was actually first used in the CSI uh, series is the lighting for television suddenly became uh, uh, done in a way that it was done in, in cinemas. And uh, that is not the entire uh, 
uh, screenshot is lit, but there are specific light sources, minimal light sources. And they were first introduced into this uh, modern day uh, dr uh, criminal drama. Uh, with this uh, kind of way of lighting uh, the cinematic uh, way of lighting television series, it brought in something which is very important for audiences. It brought in something familiar to them as a, as a bit of a language, uh, as, a, as a language of signs that they can accept to see when they see it on television so many times, they can uh, accept and see this on a theater lighting show, theater lighting in a theater, and be completely uh, in, 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 not only in awe of it, but believe the reality of it. Now here we see some fantastical pieces uh, there are obviously surreal, especially this Bob Wilson one, but and we also see some lighting fixtures being used as theater props. But uh, what what I would actually uh, propose is that uh, we came from that one light we used to use in the theater, and maybe that one source of light placed in the right moment, at the right time, at the right place and pointed at the right uh, person would actually make the one true light that we are looking for to make the theater play more real. So that's it for me.